Hello and welcome to my C++ 21st tutorial um, about making a simple pawn game. This is a part 3 of the tutorial. In this tutorial we will finish our game manager class. Uh, and the first thing we will do in this class is to draw things. So we will create a draw function. And if you watched my simple snake game tutorial, um, the draw function is very similar to that. Um, game so I will use the same method because we will use the console we won't use any fancy graphics so the first thing to do is to type the system CLS this will work on Windows CLS but on Linux you should type clear to clear the console screen but I'm on Windows so I use this um, now we need to um, print um, the walls for the game so let's run a for loop that will go from the zero to the width plus two and I will explain why do we need plus two and show the wall this will be the wall character we'll also going to need to do that again so double that and put it on the bottom and in the middle, uh, we need to add the code for drawing the um, for drawing the actual content of the window. So if we run our program currently, let's first create the C game manager object, and it will have um, the width of the level. I don't know; it will be forty by twenty, I guess, and if we run, ah, uh, sorry, I need to create an object, so I'm going to call it C and call the draw function. If you run our program now, you will get two lines, yeah. As you can see, they are, they are in the um, same line as we didn't add the end line character. So let's add line character here and also we should we need one here so let's run it now and hopefully yes I guess we got yeah we got two two lines the top wall and the bottom wall now we need to draw everything else on the screen so let's run the for loop that means we'll go from zero to the height and increase the i variable and now we will use this for loop for the width and the j will be the width so uh, a lot of people ask me um, in the previous snake game tutorial why I did this and it's it's a little bit inverted logic so the j is actually the x coordinate and the i is the y coordinate so when it looks a little bit different it isn't uh, x and y in the matrix it's it's um it's actually i and j uh, but let's um uh, print everything so we can draw the game so we need um, um this variable ball x and that uh, that variable will get the um, x-coordinate of our object ball that we initialized in the constructor up here, as you can see. Also, we need this for the y variable. And let's change that. Also, we need to do this for the players. So we need player 1x will be player 1 get x. And let's copy that to do it for player 2x, player 2x, and copy these two. So let's say y, y, and y, y. Now, um, if the j coordinate is equal to zero, this is the wall coordinate. So the first, the first actual column on the screen then we need to write the character for the wall 
Also, uh, now we should um, uh, say if the j is equal to the width minus one, we will print the wall again. Let's print the wall. And here we will um, do the logic between the, these two. We'll do the logic for printing the uh, the actual content of the map and where players are positioned in the ball, where the ball is. So we'll say this: if ball x, so this is the x coordinate of the ball, is equal to the current j coordinate. These two for loops loop through the um, through the uh, matrix or the screen that we will. Um, that we will print. So if it's equal to the J, and if player uh, and if ball uh, Y is equal to I coordinate, so if it's the current position, we will print the ball. Let's print the ball with O, for example. Um, else if if the current position player one x is equal to j as you can see the x coordinate is referenced to the j variable not the i variable be aware of that and if the player one uh, player one y is equal to the i variable uh, we will print the paddle We'll print the paddle for the player one. Let's add the comment player one here and let's add the comment ball. Also, we can copy this, add here that, change it to player two, player two, and write it for player two. This is also player two. And this will print the actual um, player two. Uh, player to first uh, dot. So else if if it's nothing, uh, so if it's not a player, it's not a ball, it's a blank space. So we will add just a space, and this should draw the level and the positions of the pedals or the players. Also, yeah, uh, we need to add a new line here. So when this for loop finishes, we add a new line. Actually, we finished the row and we add a new line for it to break. And if we run the program now, we actually get, as you can see, the um, the position of the ball is in the middle, and this is the top. Um, um, how can I say uh, the top segment of the pedal? But this looks also a little bit of ugly, so let's change these characters first before continuing the draw function. So let's stop our program. And all you need to do is to press the Windows key and R, and the run dialog will pop out and type char map. Click OK. And now this will show. Uh, you should go to the advanced view, select here the um, uh, DOS Western Europe and choose a nicer character. For example, let's use this this character for the wall. And please note here that this is the hexadecimal version of uh, this character. So 0xb2. In C++ we can change it uh, to type the hex variable. Um, we type it like this. So we omit the zero only and let's change that for the wall below and let's change it for the wall above and we can uh, optionally, okay, let's change it to something different for the player. Let's use this one for the player and as you can see full block db, zero x db. So let's say x db for the player and for the player again. And when we run our program, oh, we have the. This is this is this. Um, this is also here for the bottom wall. This is the right wall, 
and if we run our program now it looks a lot nicer don't you think yeah uh, now let's continue the drawing function this looks a lot more like a old school pawn game um, now we need to add two more parts for the player pedal so let's copy this and paste it here change this to else if so this will be in the same uh, if block and we need to change this by changing the y coordinate to 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 no actually no uh, sorry my bad we need to copy this only for player one and add it like here and copy it again and again and we need to change this player one y plus one plus two and plus three so the total count of segments will be four this will um, print the segments the four segments for the player player one and let's copy that and adapt it for player two let's say player two player two player two player two player two player two and if we run our program now you should see two nice pedals of four segments as you can see we of course can't move yet the keys don't work but the draw function is complete as you can see we can uh, move it by probably through by calling these functions uh, move up and move down but we will create a function that will be used for that so this is the complete draw function as you can see and it works now let's um, move on to the other function and that will be the input and let's create a new function call it input and that function will actually move the ball and it will also um, store the coordinates like the function above so we need this and let's place it here and we'll use the same method as on in the previous tutorial simple snake game for creating the uh, non-blocking um, get char function so if kb hit um, so if keyboard is pressed uh, we get the current character by calling this get char function so if the current character is equal to the up character that we set for our player one and if the player one um, y coordinate is uh, greater than zero the player one can move up uh, and let's copy this paste it here and let's say if up to so the player two player two and now let's copy it again or, or paste it again sorry and let's say down one and we'll say if player uh, one y coordinate coordinate is um, plus four because we have four segments is smaller than the height of the map height of the map we can move down the player if it's not then the player will move through the wall and we don't want that so let's copy this and adapt it for player two so player two player two this is all right i guess and we also need to check if um the ball get direction is equal to stop so if the direction is equal to stop so if the ball is stopped um, and we press any key 
Uh, let's randomize the direction of the ball. And if the current character is equal to Q, this will quit the game. So let's set the quit to true. And now actually we can... Um, we also have the input function, but the game is still not complete. Uh, we need to um, add the logic function that will um, do the collision detection of the game. So let's create one more function. It's going to be called logic. And we also need this from the function. And um, uh, let's say this um, for int i is equal to zero till i is less than four i plus plus, and if the ball x coordinate is equal to the player one x coordinate plus one, and if the ball y coordinate is equal to player 1 y coordinate plus i the ball will change direction and here's the part where we needed to set up this this edir uh, enum like this because we will um, we will randomize the direction um, if the ball hits one of the players so if the left pedal is hit then we will say we will cast the e direction and randomize it randomize it uh, by three starting from four so this will i i have i guess i need to close one more bracket yeah this will uh, get four values starting from from here so if the pedal left is hit the ball will either go right or upright or downright uh, the similar things goes for the so let's add a comment this is the left uh, pedal and let's copy this and adapt it for the right pedal and it's similar but uh, not the same of course um, uh, the 4 represents the pedal height if I didn't mention that so now if the ball X is equal to player 2 the right one will be player 2 minus 1 because it's one block uh, on the left and if the ball Y um, of the player two, of course, plus one, uh, sorry, pl plus i. Uh, so if our ball um, ball coordinates are equal to the coordinates of the paddles, but minus one because we don't want the ball to go into the paddle, but bounce off the paddle, not go in the paddle and then bounce off. Then we'll change the direction. So if the right paddle is hit, we will change the direction three, but this will be plus one. So we won't include the stop, but we will go from the left uh, up to the down left so let's get back here and now let's check if the ball has hit the wall so if the ball y is equal to the height minus one so we don't want uh, again we don't want the ball to go into the wall but rather bounce off the wall so that's why we need minus one um the ball um will change the direction again and we will get the current direction get the current direction and this is the um this is the ternary operator uh, for the inline if so if the ball direction is down right down right we will set the direction to to upright 
so the it will look like the ball has bounced off the wall of the down wall else if it's not down right it's um, probably the other one and it will go to the up left so that's good that's for the um, uh, bottom wall and let's copy this uh, this will be for the top wall so this will be uh, zero and we will change the direction if it's upright uh, it will be downright if the ball was heading um, upright it will now head down right or down left it will actually bounce off and if the ball x coordinate is um, equal to the actual wall coordinate so the right wall this is right wall the right wall if the ball is on the right wall then we'll score up the player one so call the score up function and pass the player one pointer and um, that's the right wall let's copy this and change it for the left wall if it's zero of course ball x is zero we'll score up the player two so the ball left went here we will score up the player two wall went here we will score up player one um, and now of course we need a final function that will be void run and the final function will run a loop while not quit quit is our variable that we define a boolean variable we'll draw then we'll input <coughs> then we'll um, do the logic and we can add uh, or maybe we don't need to add sleep currently let's try the program first so now we have our game manager and let's call the run function run our program and as you can see it blinks a lot because we didn't add sleep and if we try to move oh yeah we have a breakpoint here something uh, went wrong something actually uh, went wrong and probably mm, that I didn't set something right let's try it again so yeah probably the input has a little bit error let's check it for a moment or we can debug the program and put here uh, the quit is going to be equal to true if the current character is q oh yeah as you can see i set the current character to the q and it this executes and quits the program so i need the double equal sign here so that's a little bug. Let's run the program again. Uh, be sure to remove the breakpoint. And if we move, hopefully yes, the game works. The ball bounces off, but it's uh, fast as hell. Yeah. Uh, the player score is updated, but uh, as you can see, we don't show it up. Um, we don't show the score. And we will fix that by adding something to the draw function. Let's scroll up to the draw function. Yes, right here. Let's print the score of the game. So let's say score one and I know. Let's add score two. Score two and the line. And we also uh, need here score one. And we can also end the line here. If we run our program now, we'll get score one is zero, score two is zero. Let's 
put it yep as you can see score 2 increases and we will bounce off it bounces off it bounce off everything works perfectly as you can see I missed and they have equal scores again they have equal scores and I can do this multiple times but that's not the point the point is that you've learned how to create a simple pong game in C++ and if you have any questions, I would be glad to answer them, post them in the comments. And thanks for watching and please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching again and uh, please subscribe. See you in the next tutorial.